The Word lets us know what is acceptable to God, and what shall not come into the kingdom of heaven, and what is good, and what is evil in this world. Sin does not exist in heaven. Jesus Christ paid by the blood of his life, his sacrifice to wipe away all sin, all our sins and the sins of the world. Yet without faith in him, or even with faith, if we continue in our sins, we deny his own sacrifice for us, and there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but hellfire awaits. Sadly, this will be the case for many in the church, who are those considered to be lukewarm, lawless, and other descriptions by Jesus of the seven spirits of the churches prophesied in the revelation of Jesus Christ, which apply strongly and profoundly to this day and age, the status of the church. Jesus says, among other things, that as a church in whole, parts of us have fallen and left our first love, God, and we should repent and do the first works, or our lampstand will be quickly removed, that we have the spirit of Balaam teaching stumbling blocks before the children, eating food sacrificed to idols, sexual immorality, and should repent, or the Lord will come at them quickly with the sword of his mouth. We have the spirit of Jezebel, teaching sexual immorality, eating things sacrificed to idols, who know the depths of Satan, and God will kill these children of Jezebel in the church. We have those who are considered alive, having a good reputation, but are spiritually dead, and are told to repent. When speaking of one of the seven churches, Jesus says, only a few of this whole church have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with the Lord in white, for they are worthy. The angel of the church in Philadelphia, the Lord says they have a little strength, have kept his word, and have not denied his name. Because they have kept the Lord's command to persevere, he will keep them from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. We are told in Revelation 3, 11, Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. We are told to hold fast to the Lord, so that our crowns are not taken. Keep his word, abide in him, and not fall away from our first love, God, who is Jesus Christ, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. The last angel of the Church of Christ is described at Revelation 3, 15 to 19. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and white garments, that you may be clothed, and the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see, as many as I love, I rebuke, and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. This is the Lord's prophecy of the church, his body, the body of Christ, also applying to the end days, the days in which we live right now. We know from the Lord's word that many Christians will be considered as lawless when they face the Lord for judgment in that day, the day of the Lord. And this means there are many branches in the vine of Christ that are withered, not producing fruit and will be gathered to be burned. They will face hellfire. The word I have shared with you is abundantly clear. The Lord is calling his church to repentance. I sound this trumpet of warning that we should all purify ourselves before God and repent, come away from the world and remember our first love. When Jesus says he counsels us to buy from him white garments so that we may be clothed to cover the shame of our nakedness, this means when we aren't purified and in a white garment, we are in nakedness before the Lord. This is being in sin but not realizing it. Being in darkness without fully submitting to 
and seeking the Lord. He says, we need eye salve so that we can see, meaning we have fallen into a spiritual slumber, a blindness. We are in darkness and have a dire need for purification and repentance. This is the call of the Lord to his church, to many in the church. And I hear it loud and clear and have tried to set my whole focus to these things, to improve in the Lord, to come away from the world and to purify myself before him. I share these things with you as a call to arms for the church, that we must be zealous and repent, purify ourselves from sin, seek the Lord and his word, and we will purify our garments by our Lord's grace, and we can be considered to be part of the true, holy, in white, clean and righteous bride of Christ, arrayed in the wedding garment representing our spiritual cleanliness from sin and the wicked world, and our devotion to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Bridegroom. As He is faithful and loving to us, so should we be to Him. There is very little time left. I am strongly, strongly warning you that God's judgment is at the door. Now, I've done a video on the rapture and why I believe there will be a post-tribulation rapture when Christ returns at the end of the tribulation, and that all believers being taken in the pre-tribulation rapture, as many teach, is false in the Word of God. I will now shortly expand this to you. I do absolutely believe there will be a rapture or gathering at the end of the tribulation, as is stated in Matthew 24, 29-31, and Mark 13, 24 to 27, after the tribulation of those days, as it is said in the word. However, I now believe there will be a rapture of the bride of Christ before the tribulation. Those who have kept the word of God and have not denied his name, who will be kept from the hour of trial that comes upon the whole world. I previously believe this only meant being kept from harm on earth during the tribulation, but I now believe, given the Lord's words, that he is coming to get his bride at an hour and time they will not know. And also the fact that the army the Lord returns with at Armageddon is an army of the saints. I believe they make up the raptured bride and those who subsequently remained on earth, but held fast to the Lord and were purified in the tribulation. The Revelation 2.10 do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The rapture of the bride, I believe, will be first, and this will be those in the body of Christ who have purified themselves before the Lord, a clean and spotless bride, arrayed in white for the bridegroom. Not all of the church have answered the call to the marriage supper. Matthew 22, 10 to 14. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all who they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. So, without a wedding garment, you could not be at the wedding. Many are called to the wedding, but few are chosen. What I am saying is that many of the Christians today would not be considered to be the holy righteous, in white, clean and pure bride of Christ. They have defiled garments. I believe that only the bride will be raptured before the tribulation, which is imminent. Those who have lost their first love, God, are in sin and are in need of repentance, are not the bride of Christ, and unless they purify themselves before God by abiding in Him and His Word, separating themselves from the world, being free from sin, they will not be raptured before the tribulation. 
Only the bride, who had oil in their lamp, is taken. However, this is not the end of the church on the earth, which is why I still believe in a post-tribulation rapture, as well as potentially even a mid-tribulation rapture. We know after the sixth seal of the great tribulation, there is a great multitude from the earth before the throne in heaven, arrayed in white robes. They are set at Revelation 7.14. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they made their robes white through the tribulation. We know the bride is already white and clean and has been waiting on the Lord. This clearly shows to me the bride is separate and I believe already taken off the earth at that point. Whether those in Revelation 7.14 are raptured or die on the earth, it still represents a harvest of the Lord, of his church upon the earth. The bride was ready and was taken in the first harvest. The second harvest, the Lord took those believers who were on the earth who were not fully yet purified to be the bride, but they purified their robes through the great tribulation, as we are told in Revelation 7.14. The final harvest is of those who are alive and remain. This is the final gathering of his elect from the earth's four corners. To me, this makes the most sense as the Lord is trying to save as much of his church as possible and bring as many who are willing out of darkness. I believe even if the bride is raptured, some may come to the earth to do the Lord's will in this time. I believe there will be saints on the earth during the entire tribulation period doing God's will. When the Lord returns at Armageddon, he returns with an army of saints who do battle against the kings and armies of the earth, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet, defeating them. The bride and those who, are, who purified their robes in the great tribulation will be a part of this army. So by this I still stand firm that all believers will not be taken in a pre-tribulation rapture. Many or most will not be, having hidden sin, unpurified garments, abiding in sin, not abiding in the Lord and his word, and will, be, and will not be taken as the Lord's pure, holy and righteous bride. However, through the tribulation, many will be purified and will most likely be raptured after the sixth seal, the great earthquake. Why I say raptured and not killed and go to the Lord is that there is a great multitude of all nations, tongues before the throne. We have no idea on time frames, but it happens immediately after the sixth seal, which is the great earthquake across the whole earth. And they could have died in this earthquake, or they could have been taken by the Lord. Either way, we have a vast multitude from all nations who appear before the throne of God in white robes, who have purified themselves through the great tribulation, washing their robes and making them white in the blood of the Lamb. The bride of Christ is waiting for their bridegroom and will be a pure and spotless bride when the Lord comes for them. I believe for these reasons there will be three harvests of the church, all gathered in Christ. One rapture of the bride of Christ, of those who and of those who are purified during the tribulation, either by death or being taken. And finally, the rapture or gathering after the tribulation of those days, the gathering of all the elect on the earth in Christ. Why I say these things is that I believe the great tribulation is at our doorstep. God's judgment on the earth is imminent. We should all purify ourselves before the Lord and seek to be his pure and holy bride. I'm not saying I know of myself. Even if I am still on the earth, I will hold fast to the Lord and will not deny his name unto my death. And if I hold firm, I know I will receive the crown of life. The problem with most teachings of the rapture 
is that it is an all believers taken in the pre-tribulation rapture, saying no believers currently will ever see the tribulation. This does not focus on purification and holiness. It doesn't focus on being the bride of Christ. It says everyone's taken, no one will suffer. This is not true, as not all who hold faith in Jesus Christ are his bride. Not all believers in Christ have the characteristics of the bride. This is clearly seen by the state of the church Jesus calls to repentance in the first three chapters of the Revelation. There will be a large amount of Christians left from the first rapture. I don't presume to expect or say my position either way. It's up to the Lord. I am ready for whatever happens. But I am earnestly seeking to purify myself before the Lord with all of my effort, as I know that time is incredibly short. I've been given so many signs about this. Many of those on the earth during the Great Tribulation will be purified and their garments made white. There will be many roles and tasks to fulfill on the earth during this time. Remember, our lives by our faith in the Lord, repenting and turning from sin, are guaranteed in God. Our greatest task is to save those in darkness, those we should have great love for, the unsaved who do not know the truth, to save them and to ensure a great harvest of believers in Christ from the earth. Every soul saved is a new family member in heaven. James 5.20 Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul and cover a multitude of sins. No matter what happens in the future, hold fast to your faith. Seek the Lord constantly and abide in him and his word, doing his will and not your own on the earth. Unfortunately, many Christians haven't readied themselves for the coming and imminent judgment Many are not even aware that judgment is about to fall, as many have not expected to suffer. If they are not considered by the Lord as his ready bride and taken, they may fall away and renounce God in the tribulation. But many will hold fast and their robes will be purified. But we as a church as a whole should be prepared and readying ourselves for whatever happens, not expecting that we are in a position to be taken. That's the Lord's decision. There will be... Sorry, 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. There will be terrible persecution coming for Christians. We are warned in the word. We will be hated by all nations, and there will be saints beheaded for not accepting the mark of the beast. The beast will make war against the saints and overcome them, and the dragon makes war against all those who hold the commandments of Jesus. This is in the Revelation. We are all warned of this to come, and it is very soon to be. Jesus' words at Matthew 16.25 apply strongly to the coming times and the separation from the world that we should take in not partaking of its evil. He says, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If you desire to save your life and accept the mark of the beast by fear of death in the flesh, you will lose your soul and be tormented in the lake of fire forever and ever, as explained in the Revelation 14, 9 to 11. If you lose your life for the sake of the Lord, if you refuse to deny Jesus even if they kill you, You will lose your life in the flesh, but your soul will live and you will find life for all eternity with God. I know the truth of these things. I know the truth of God. I tell you only from my experiences, and that's all I can say to give my own testimony.
your faith is entirely up to you, as is your spiritual relationship with the Lord. We all have our own story. This verse is very applicable to the end times. Also, that we must lose our lives that we had in this world, entangled in the lusts, attraction, wickedness and evil of the world. We must separate ourselves from these things, thus losing our former selves, our former lives, our old man and woman, who are nailed to the cross, and to be born again, in a new wineskin, with a new spirit, with God the Father, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, and the Holy Spirit with us. We are to be dead to our old lives and dead to sin, thus losing our former lives and gaining our life in the Lord. This verse is amazing. I love the Word of God. It is so rich. The truth oozes from it. It is amazing. I am so thankful to the Lord for bringing me from the darkness, saving me from certain death. It was so gross, not knowing what was the truth and what good and evil really is. It was a long journey in my life, but I am overjoyed and so blessed to be who I am now in Christ. I tell you all of these things, my brothers and sisters, only to encourage you, as I love you and I want the best for you. You have an amazing destiny. We all do, if we choose to answer the call of God in our lives. Now, Christians, the Church of Christ, we must ready ourselves for the difficulties spelled out in the Word. While we are not the targets of the Lord's wrath on the wicked, we must purify ourselves, be zealous and repent. I prefer myself to not assume I will be taken by the Lord but I will most certainly be awaiting him with my lamp full of oil, not slum slumbering or drunk, but sober and awake, for he is due to come at any time. He is coming soon, but even if we are not taken, do not lose hope. The great promise is that if you hold fast in your faith unto your death, even through tribulation, you will receive the crown of life and be with God forevermore. There is much to do on the earth in bringing those from darkness. We are the light of this world, as the Lord tells us. We are the salt of the earth. We are His church, and we should not lose our flavor. I am calling the whole church to strongly seek the Lord in earnest, as His judgment on the earth is about to fall. I know this for certain. The Lord has shown me so many times in dreams. We must be holy, purify ourselves, be the bride of Christ, the fruitful branch who abides in the Lord and His Word, 